mercy, Lord. Oh, God, move upon them right now, Lord. Oh, God, and look on Patricia Moss, Carlin Williams, Lord. Oh, God, Jeremy White, Mr. Holder, Lord. Oh, God, Felicia Smith, Lord. Oh, God, touch them right now. Oh, God, from the very crown of their head. Oh, God, to the sole of their feet, Lord. Oh, God, move right now, Lord. Touch Sister Lisa, Lord. Oh, God, Sister Seaman, Lord. Oh, God, Phyllis Evans, Lord. Luther Watson, Lord. Touch them right now, Lord. Oh, God, Brother Otis Hanson, Lord. Oh, God, move right now. Oh, God, Sister Phyllis Alexander, Lord. Oh, God, touch and strengthen her body, Lord. Oh, God, by the power of your anointing, by the power of your shed blood, Lord. Oh, God, move right now, Lord. Oh, God, today, oh, God, look on the Reed family, Lord. Oh, God, bless the Massenburg, the Henderson family. Oh, God, touch the green, the Hansard. Oh, God, move right now, the heart of the Williams family. Oh, God, let your blood cover right now. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Oh, God, look on the Owens, the White family. Oh, God, the Burnett, Lord. Oh, God, touch them right now. Oh, God, the Clark family. Oh, God, move upon them. your great name because God you are worthy and oh God as we prepare to go into the service today Lord oh God open up the windows of heaven let your glory let your blessing flow upon this house God upon this people and we will give your name praise in that precious name of Jesus amen and amen let us give God a praise in the house. Give God a praise in the house. Because he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise.
on the word that's going to be brought forth today, Lord. Oh, God, we want a word from you, God, Lord. We want a word that's going to cleanse, a word that's going to purify, a word, from God, that's going to help us make us make that decision to turn from our wicked ways, God. We need a word from the Lord on today, God, Lord. Oh, God, the pastor of this house, this flock, Father God, Lord, lead him in God, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord. Teach him. Show him the way, Father God, that he may be able to grow, Father God, in you, Father God, in you, Father God, Lord. We want growth, Lord. Oh, God, we want development. We want maturity in you, Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give us, Lord, that Christian confidence. Give us that holy boldness, Father God, Lord, in the name. Give us love, God. Help us to love our enemies, Lord. Help us to love our family and friends. Help us to love our church family, Lord. Help us love, Father God. Love the way you love with our unconditional love. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, God, to have compassion, Lord, and not compromise, Lord. We don't want to compromise your word. We don't want to compromise, Lord, take down from the truth. But, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life, God. And we need you as never before. Have thine way, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We have our scripture. Speak. Be converted. We're here this morning. Amen. <laughs> I've been reading from uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Everybody have it? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not in after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of the life of Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the oops, law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do, find, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And a blessing this word. Amen. Praise him at this time.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. There's healing in his presence, church. Oh, there's deliverance in his presence. There's power in his presence. Salvation, it belongs to you in his presence. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you, God. We worship you.
one more time for somebody. Are they ready? Our hands are lifted. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, 
and teach thou what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send I pray thee by the hand of whom thou wilt say it. I want to use for a subject. Your excuse won't work. Why are we needing as people to stop telling God I can't and tell God I can? We're living in a time where people can find all kinds of excuses why they should do things. Especially when they don't want to do it. At home, the children can find excuses why they didn't do the chores around the house. At work, people can tell the supervisor find excuses why they didn't complete a task that he had given them. We just have excuses, excuses. But sometimes when we want to do something, we can say like the word say in Philippians 4.13. We build up our confidence because it's something that we want to do. Or if it's not, we can rely on God and say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Man, I know we can do all things through Christ, and I know God is not going to give us something, amen, to do that we cannot handle. Because he's omnipotent, omnipresent, he knows everything and everywhere at the same time. Our God won't overload us and cause us to fail. That's right. But we use excuses. Excuses, excuses. I heard it when he said in Isaiah 41 and 10. He said, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteousness and my right hand. The word can't mean express that someone is unable to do a task that is put before them. But we don't want to hear the word I can't, but I want to hear the word I can it. Because when I say I can, it let me know that I have the ability and the power and the skill to do what I'm asked to do. Can somebody give God a praise in the house? We see here in the book of Exodus, we find a young man by the name of Moses who was a murderer and he had to flee from Egypt. Right. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Get out of Egypt and to the countryside. Immediately go out there and be a man, a keeper of the sheep. Moses had been gone for 40 years, a long time. Yes. No doubt he had somewhat forgot about the sin of what he had done in Egypt. But God needed somebody, praise God, to go down to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. But who would be a better candidate than Moses? Moses was there. Moses was bright, brought up in the household of Pharaoh. Moses had been taught, praise God, and he had learned and he was very skilled and could talk, praise God. But he had excuses. So here in the book, praise God, of Exodus, I see five excuses Jesus. that Moses used to try to convince God that find somebody else. Yes. But God knows you. Yes, he does. Whether you 
you are a broken vessel, whether you are a marred vessel, whether you are a weak vessel, a vessel without faith, God know you. And God can call you to do a task that you feel that you will have the ability of the power to do. But we quit to say, I can, God, do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Knowing that God has all power and whatever I need, God can supply. But Moses here would begin to doubt because he was scared to go back to Egypt. <laughs> he said, Lord, who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. That I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses was content being where he was. Yes. Man and the sheep led back on the mountainside. But it was something about a bush that was burning out on the hillside. A man of bush, a man that was burning that, a man Moses began to get inquisitive and say, a man that I need to go and see. For I see a bush that's burning, but it's not being consumed. Hallelujah. So he goes there and God began to talk to him. But Moses, amen, use excuse, excuse. But even the first one, as I read, he said, Lord, I'm not good enough. <laughs> oh, but God can take, amen, the worst of us. Huh? The amen, the low down of us. <laughs> and caused us to do some great things. Oh, hallelujah. If I begin to look through the book of time, I can see, praise God, people that God used that folks had wrote off yes. and said they ain't no good. Yes. Oh, but God can take the least one yes, around you. The drug addict, yes. the alcoholic, oh, the prostitute, Jesus. the homeless. And he can use them to do his will. So just because you're walking around with your head up in the air. Walking around like, hey man, you're the smartest thing in the world. That God going to use you. Because you're too proud, you know too much. God got to get the one that's doubtful. The one that, hey man, people think the least of. God said, I can show you what I can do. So Moses, I don't want to hear your excuse. Honey, I don't care about what you think. You need to go down there and allow me to talk through you. Oh, praise the name of God. Moses, amen. You got to go down there. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But Moses came up with another excuse and said, Lord, when they ask me, I don't have the answer. Listen to what Moses said in the 13th verse. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and they say to them, The God of your father has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name. What shall I say to them? Mm, 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 mm. I don't even know your name. What can I, who can I say oh, that sent me? God said to Moses, Thus said, I am that I am. Thus said, Thou said to the children of Israel, I am have sent me good God from Zion. Who shall I tell? Just tell him I am that I am. Well, who are you? I am the Lord thy God. All power in heaven and in earth is in my hand. So Moses, you don't have an excuse now. 
It's a bad guy. Just tell them, I am. Hallelujah. I am. You know, Moses, you a smart guy. Because I know Pharaoh trained you. <laughs> and you don't know who I am. Uh, you don't know who I am. You don't know that I'm the father of all the children of Israel. You don't know that I'm their God. And I called you because I heard the cry. I heard them when they were stepping in the mud with, amen, wheat making bricks to build, amen, Pharaoh's kingdom. I heard them when they was being beaten, praise God. I heard them when they was crying from the whips, amen, that were put on their back. And now I'm calling you, Moses, amen, to go back down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh he got to loose my force and let him go. Amen. The same way God talked. Amen. To the devil that had you back. Amen. The devil that had you wrapped up and tied up in sin. He told the devil to loose and the devil had to let you go. Can I get a praise in the house? Is there anybody in here? Amen. That God told the devil to loose and the devil set free. So if God has set you free, he has fixed you and created in you a vessel to have no excuse to do what God asks you to do. Stop telling God I can't. And tell God I can't. I believe a little professor, clunk or whatever they call him on another professor. Man, he was seeing this beautiful young lady, praise God, and he wanted to lose some weight. <laughs> And he was running around and saying, I can, I can, I can. In other words, I can lose this weight. So you got to build up in your own mind, in your own faith, that you can do all things through Christ that strengthened as you. But Moses was just using all kinds of excuses not to do what God, amen, had asked him to do. So if we move out the third chapter to the fourth chapter, we find that Moses was still trying to find excuses. Praise God not to go. In that fourth chapter, in the verse one, Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they said the Lord has not appeared to you. Oh, Moses, stop using all kinds of excuses. Amen. To keep from doing the will of God. Especially, praise God, God's will, Moses. I'm going to fix this thing for you. I'm going to give you a couple of things. Amen. The people, amen, that you can do before the people. That they can believe that I have sent you. You see that rod, Moses? Reach down and pick up that rod. He had the staff. He said, now take that rod and cast it down on the ground. And the rod turned to a serpent. Hallelujah. Crawling around the ground. He said, now reach down and pick it up. When he reached down and picked the serpent up, it turned back into a rod. He said, take your hand, Moses, and stick it into your coat. And when he pulled it out, it was leprosy all over his hand. He said, now put it back in your coat. He put it back in the coat. And when he pulled it out, it was a clean hand. Don't you tell me God won't equip you to do what he wants you to do. Moses and God said, go ahead on Moses and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But Moses still had another excuse when he picked it up and the tent Look at what Moses said. Moses said unto the Lord, Oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent enough. Amen. But in other words, Lord, I got a speech impediment. I can't talk. I can't put my words together. Oh, hallelujah. What another excuse. 
excuse. We always use an excuse of what we can't do. Hallelujah. Trying to get out of what God will have us to do. He's a terrified of the people because I can't talk. I can't speak like you want me to speak. Oh, pray in the name of God. Oh, hallelujah. But you know that didn't work either. Hallelujah. Because God, amen, can take your flaws that you have. Hallelujah. Those cracks that's in the vessel. Those problems that you say you have. And he can fix it. And if he can't fix it, he can put somebody by your side. Come here, brother. He can put somebody by your side that can talk for you. That can amen speak for you. So Moses, you might not can speak, but I got somebody that can talk for you. Just open your mouth, Moses, and I'll speak for you. We must understand that God ain't gonna put us out there and leave us by ourselves. He ain't gonna put us out there to embarrass us. He gonna put us out there to accomplish wherefore he sent us. Moses, you might not can talk, praise God, but I'm gonna fix things for you. Hallelujah. So, the Lord, I can't. <laughs> Ain't going to work here today, Moses. <laughs> it's not going to work, praise God. <laughs> so, might as well for you uh, to go ahead on and do uh, what I asked you to do. <laughs> but here he come up again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> In the 13th verse. <laughs> Look at what he said. But he said, oh Lord, please say <laughs> By the hand of whomever else you may. Lord, don't send me. Find somebody else to send. Lord, I just don't want to go. Hallelujah. But you know, when God begin to talk to you, God begin to give you orders. And things that you should do. He get tired of telling you the same thing. Yeah. Over and over again. Yeah. He get tired of hearing your excuses. Of why you can't do something. Hallelujah. I'm not qualified. I can't talk. They won't believe me. Hallelujah. But God chose you for a reason. He called you for a reason. He called you to do the work that he will have you to do. See, some people God just can't use. Some people know more than God. Some people want to do it their own way. But let me tell you something, darling. If God called you to do something, he don't want to hear your excuses. Because when the hammer ring and when the hammer struck the nail, that was driven through his hand. Your excuse was nailed to the cross. So we don't have no excuse. When God called us today to do something, we should tell God, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. God, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it. I might not have all the things that I need, but I got faith enough to know, God, that you will be by my side. I heard you say in your word that you will never leave me, nor forsake me. You ain't going to put me out there all by myself. When I go through the valley and the shadow of death, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from a my people go. Tell them. Tell them, Moses. Stand up. 
and be my vessel and do what I call you to do. God have called a lot of us in this building to go out and do a job. To go out and do a work. But we always telling God, God, I can't. Lord Jesus. I can't, God. Because of this and because of that. We good with excuses, y'all. Oh, we can make a song that amen nobody else can think of. Because we don't want to do it. See, when you want to do something, you raise your hand and you're willing to do it. But when God call you to do something, might not be what I thought I want to do in the church. I suppose the preach. I suppose the teach. I don't suppose to clean the bathrooms. I don't suppose to vacuum the floor. I don't suppose to empty the trash can. Do you know who I am? I got a master's degree. I got a doctor's degree. God don't care what kind of degree you got. He don't care what your standard is in the community. If God's a vacuum, vacuum. God's an empty the trash, empty the trash. Whatever God said, do that what you do. When have we become so high and so mighty that we are above God and can't do what God asks us to do? That's why the church is empty, because we don't want to do what God calls us to do. We want to do everything else. Hallelujah. Moses, stop saying I can't and say I can Saints, stop saying you can't and say you can. When somebody asks you to do something and it is the will of God, God going to break you through. God ain't going to leave you hanging. God ain't going to leave you looking crazy and stupid because he's going to be right there with you. Don't be dismayed. I am with you. Don't be weak hearted and weak minded. I am with you. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Yes. I feel my voice changing. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Because God wants us to get this. Because we use it too many excuses. They meant not to do what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of God. We are a servants of God. And a servant serve. They serve. Even when they don't want to, they serve. Can I cut you back? Can I take you back to the White House? Can I take you back, amen, to the Master's house? They had servants there. House Negroes, if you may. Then they had them in the field. But when they was in the house, I know sometimes they didn't feel like saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Amen. Putting the plate in front of the white folks and they all sitting around talking, eating all kinds of good food. Praise God. And they won't eat that. They sometimes was sick, wasn't feeling well, but because they was a servant, they had to go to work in the house. That's right. All right. So God don't want you to keep telling him you can. Amen. Tell God you can. Because he ain't going to come to you when you down and out, amen, and ain't able to do that. He going to make sure that you are able to do it. But amen, you might feel like Moses, feel like Lord, amen. In other words, Moses was just scared. Because he know how he left Egypt. 
He fled from Egypt because he was a murderer. Ain't that something? Look at what God can do. Amen. To do his work. Moses, a murderer, fled. Mm -hmm. Saul, a persecutor. Look who he is. Cook God from sight. We can go all through name and folks in the Bible that God used, praise God, that folks didn't think too much of. But look at what God can do. Your excuse ain't gonna work, y'all. So stop giving excuses. Can I, can, can, can I break it down a little bit? Huh? Y'all don't mind, do you? Y'all ain't gonna get mad with me, huh? I don't care. You can't hurt me no way. Because I got the hedge around me. Huh? Oh, can I talk about this thing? Oh, I can't do these certain things in church, bro, Steve. Huh? I, I, I can't teach you. <laughs> Ooh, good God. No, you can't do a whole lot. But with God, you can do it all. Huh? Stop saying what you can and say what I can. I can't teach Sunday school. Hmm? I can't sing in the choir. Hmm? I can't be the secretary. Hmm? I can't be the treasurer. I can't be the president of the organization. I can't work with the pastor's aid. What can you do? Man, if all these things you can't do, what can you do? You mean to tell me God go reach in the monk in the mirror and pick you up and place you in the seat in the church where you can't do nothing? Hey Amen. God don't need folks that can't do nothing. God need folks that go stand up and say, Lord, I can. I can do anything with you that you ask me to do. Lord, use me. We'll sing the song. Lord, use me for your glory. Lose me, Lord. But when God try to use you, you bag up with all kinds of excuses and telling God I can't. But if God come to you and ask you today, amen, what can you do in the house of God to glorify, to magnify, to lift me up? What can you say? No, you can say, Lord, if I praise you, if I glorify you, I will lift you up. Stop saying I can. Stop saying. Because I got a bad knee. <laughs> Praise God. I could have said I couldn't come to church today. Both ankles swollen up. Amen. Can't hardly walk. But what excuse I'm going to tell God? <laughs> huh? Even in the midst of my trouble. In the midst of my pain. I'm a servant. I got to go anyhow. See we got to think, stop thinking we so important. And get back to the status that I'm a servant in the house of God. So that me, even when I'm down and out, even when I don't feel like, woo, uh, even when I got a headache, uh, even when my body aching, uh, when I'm all swollen up and twisted up, uh, all the pain, uh, because I'm a servant uh, of the Most High God. I got to do his will because I got faith enough to believe in God that he going to deliver. He's going to break me out. That's why I got to give him praise. That's why when we come into the house, we need to come worshiping, praising, and glorify God that he'll open up the windows and allow his glory to come in this house and to touch every problem in this house, every sickness, every pain, every heartache. I now go to come into the house. I can't talk to her. Alright? Get your brother Aaron there. 
He can talk. That's right. uh, you just be there to lead. Right. You be there. Right. Hallelujah to do what I tell you to do. Right. So Moses, what's your excuse now? You gave me five. And I done fixed all five. So I think it's time for you to get up now. And go and do what I ask you to do. See, some of y'all, it's time for y'all to get up. God been dealing with you too long. You've been sitting down too long on God. Now it's time for you to get up and be about God's business. Be about what God has called you and asked you to do. You don't want to be tired of her and I can't. And you need to say, God, I can't. I can because I know you're going to be right there with me. Right there by my side. And see, Moses went on down there, didn't he? And look what God done. He showed up in an awesome way. He done things that was, amen, wasn't even imaginable. Through Moses. And it probably surprised Moses too. I can't, Lord. They won't believe me. Huh? They don't believe me. A lot of things I say, they don't believe me. But is that going to make me stop? No, sometimes when I minister, folks don't believe the word of God. Because if they did, this place would be full. But should I stop? Should I say I can't? Because they won't believe me. Moses, that wasn't a good excuse there. God said, so I'm going to give you something. Then when this is demonstrated to the people, they will believe. Saints of God, when God gave you that Holy Ghost, did it make you believe? Made you stronger, didn't it? Huh? Because you connected to Him. And if you don't have His Spirit today, guess what? God didn't say he can't. God said, I can. I can give it to you if you can believe and receive it. Huh? I can heal you if you believe it. Whatever you're going through, God said, I can fix it for you. Whatever you need, God can give it to you. If you would believe. Huh? Stop doubting. Stop being scared. I know we quote the scripture. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. We quote that all the time. But then we use it as an excuse. I'm scared. I can't do it. We got to have enough faith in God to believe whatever test is put before us. God won't let us down. God will bring us through. That's your faith. To believe that God will bring it through. And he will. He will. He will bring you through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So stop saying I can't to situations. And say I can. Because God has given me the ability he has given me the strength and he has given me the power to do whatever is set before me. Can we give God the praise? Give him a praise in the house. Knowing that I can do anything that God asks me to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to use the old saying because I haven't seen it in the Bible yet. How they ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. <laughs> God ain't going to wait you down. He said, my what? My burdens are what? My yoke is what? Hallelujah. So that lets me know that he's not going to overload me and put me in a situation where I can't. I know I can. Let us all stand. Is there one in the house today? 
that desire prayer, that desire to be baptized in His name, you can come right now. Anyone desire your prayer, desire to be baptized, desire to make this your church home, you can come right now. Or come under the watch care of this ministry. You can come. 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 Don't let it be said too late. But we need to, while the blood is rolling on our little bank, to make up an our mind. The Lord, I know I can. Because you are there to help me through. Father, in that precious name, Jesus. God, we thank you for your love, your kindness. God, we just thank you for everything that you have done and what you are about to do in our lives. For we know, God, that without you, God, we can do nothing. But God, we know, praise God, that we can do everything, Lord, if you strengthen us and be by our side. Father, today is your people stand, Lord. Oh, God, remove that word, I can't, and replace it with, I can't. Knowing, God, that you're not going to leave us or forsake us. God, but you're going to stand right by our side, Lord, to help us to overcome in this situation that is placed before us. God bless your house, bless your people. Touch the children, the grandchildren, the parents. God, touch them right now. Oh God, let that anointing power of the Holy Ghost, let it rule in them. Father God, we'll give you praise. God, we'll give you glory. Every excuse, proud God, that folks use, Lord, oh God, remove it. And let them know that every excuse was nailed to the cross. Oh God, we give you praise, we give you glory. In that name, Jesus, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.